new research. Dogs remember an average of 89 words. The way dogs understand the nuances of human language is impressive. After all, the animal itself does not use words. It turns out that just a fraction of a second after we start saying phrases like, walk, or, eat, dogs can react to what we want to say. To some extent, they are even able to understand the tone of our voice. While a dog's vocabulary isn't as rich as ours, a new study suggests the average dog can consistently respond to 89 words or phrases. Almost half of them are commands such as, sit, or, stay, the rest are nouns such as, delicacy. But it turns out that the best trained dogs respond to more than 200 specific words, which is equivalent to the vocabulary of a two-year-old child. Of course, the dog doesn't just say the words, but it seems to react in a specific and consistent way. This suggests that our four-legged friends somehow understand our language. The study was published in Applied Animal Behavior Science. The new research was based on a checklist that parents use to assess young children's vocabulary. It went to 165 dog owners of different breeds and ages. Breed and training a dog to serve in the police or army seem to have an impact on the vocabulary understood by quadrupeds. The situation was different in the case of the dog's age and the characteristics of its owner, which did not significantly affect the list. Based on owner reports, dogs appear to vary widely not only in numbers but also in the types of words they respond to, the study authors write. Previous experiments have shown that some dog breeds, when subjected to intensive training, can remember up to 1,000 words. But what about the average domestic dog? The authors of the current study asked owners to rate their pets' reactions to 172 words and phrases, and then rated their reactions to each phrase on a scale of 0 to 5. A score of zero meant that the dog never responded specifically or consistently to the word or phrase. On the other hand, a score of five meant that the dog responded frequently. Even when the words were said in different places, in different tones, and by different people. The researchers caution that in this type of research there is always a risk that the owners will overestimate the skills of their pet. As it turned out, there are 10 words or phrases recognized by more than 90% of all dogs. These common words and phrases included the dog's name as well as, sit, come, good dog, lay down, stay, wait, no, okay, and leave. In contrast, only a few dogs were able to consistently and specifically respond to phrases and words such as, wipe your paws, quiet, and speak up. The study also found that dogs professionally trained for the police or army understood about 50% more, more words than any other dog. However, the sample size was too small to say with certainty that some dog breeds are more capable than others. Experts find the new findings interesting, but more research is needed to confirm the new findings, especially if we take into account how subjective the interpretation of dog behavior by the owners themselves can be. Nevertheless, the research is a good step and points to a way in which experiments can be continued in the future, experts emphasize. Wormholes, anti-gravity drive and lunar bombing. U.S. government secret program. The U.S. government has spent millions of dollars researching bizarre experimental technologies such as invisibility cloaks, anti-gravity devices, and wormholes. A secret government program also involved bombing the moon with nuclear weapons. According to leaked documents, the bizarre research was funded by the now-defunct AATIP, Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. 
The Secret Project ran from 2007 to 2012 and was led by the U.S. Department of Defense. The leaked documents include nearly 1,600 pages of reports, proposals, agreements and meeting notes. They also reveal some of AATIP's weirder priorities. AATIP has become synonymous with UFOs, thanks to several now infamous videos of an unidentified aircraft moving in seemingly impossible ways. In 2017, former program director Luis Elizondo revealed them. However, new documents suggest that AATIP was doing more than just investigating reports of UFO encounters. Most intriguing are the dozens of Defense Intelligence Reference Documents, DIRD, that discuss the use of various, advanced technologies. This collection includes reports on, traversable wormholes, stargates, and negative energy, high-frequency gravitational wave communications, warp drive, a fictional drive invented for Star Trek, ed dark energy and manipulation of extra dimensions, and many other topics that will seem familiar to science fiction fans. Many reports highlight the impracticality of implementing advanced technologies. For example, in the DIRD report on, invisibility. The authors, whose names have been withheld from all reports, write that, perfect cloaking devices are impossible because they require materials where the speed of light approaches infinity. However, cloaking devices that make objects invisible to microwave sensors such as radars and motion detectors are, definitely within the reach of current technology, the authors wrote. Other reports did not shy away from bold and sometimes even absurd proposals for the implementation of advanced technologies. In a report on, negative mass propulsion, the authors propose a plan to search the center of the moon for light metals that can be, 100,000 times lighter than steel and yet have the strength of steel. To reach the center of the moon, the authors propose tunneling through the moon's crust and mantle using thermonuclear explosives. Of course, the United States did not blow up the moon, and it has no intention of doing so. At least in the near future, NASA's upcoming Artemis missions plan to return humans to the moon for the first time since the Apollo missions, with the ultimate goal of establishing a lasting human presence there. It is not known whether the DIRD documents ever led to any long-term investment in advanced technology. Much of the AATIP program was based on research commissioned by a private company called Bigelow Aerospace Advanced Space Studies BAFS. This company, run by Robert Bigelow, a personal friend of the late Senator Harry Reid, who was responsible for creating AATIP, was awarded a $10 million contract for the program's first year of research. Surprising discoveries in breast cancer research. Cancers wake up when patients sleep. Scientists have made a surprising discovery. It turns out that breast cancer cells spread mainly during sleep. Cancers are most deadly when their cells enter the bloodstream and travel to a new location in the body, creating deadly metastases. These findings could change the way we treat breast cancer and lead to the development of new therapies. A new study published in the journal Nature has found that people with breast cancer are more likely to get stray cells, called circulating tumor cells, CTC, into their blood at night than during the day. King Jun Meng, a chronobiologist at the University of Manchester, says the discovery reveals some basic principles of human physiology that have gone unnoticed until now. Further research may lead to the development of better ways to track the development of cancer. The scientific community has debated for decades how the body's circadian rhythm affects the development of cancer. 
New research has produced evidence that cancers wake up when patients are asleep, says study co-author biologist Nicola Aceto. This is a step forward in understanding metastasis. In the long term, such findings become beneficial for patients, he adds. In 2007, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified circadian rhythm disorders as a probable carcinogen. This came after long-term studies found that people who work irregular hours, such as flight attendants and nurses, are at a higher risk of developing breast cancer. Why this happens is still a mystery. The human circadian clock is controlled by various genes that operate on a 24-hour schedule. They affect many processes in the body, including metabolism and sleep. However, most researchers initially thought that cancer cells were mutated so much that they wouldn't be able to adapt to such a schedule, says Aceto. In the case of metastasis, the first clue came when Aceto and his colleagues noticed that CTC levels in mice with tumors varied depending on the time of day their blood was drawn. This observation prompted the researchers to draw blood from 30 women hospitalized for breast cancer, once at 4 a.m. and the second time at 10 a.m. The researchers found that most of the CTCs, nearly 80 percent, appeared in blood samples taken at 4 a.m. while the patients were still resting. At first I was surprised because until now we thought that tumors were sending out circulating cells all the time, says Aceto. However, the data was clear. After the first surprise, we started to be very excited, he adds. The researchers verified their hypothesis in the laboratory. The team transplanted breast cancer tumors into mice and tested the animal's CTC levels throughout the day. Compared to humans, mice have an inverted circadian rhythm, meaning they are most active at night and tend to rest during the day. The team found that the animal's CTC levels peaked during the day, sometimes at levels up to 88 times higher than when the animals were active. In addition, the researchers collected CTCs from resting and active mice. They added different fluorescent tags to these two sets of cells and then injected them back into the animals. Most of the cells from which new tumors have grown are resting cells, suggesting that these CTCs are somehow more efficient at metastasizing. This is a striking finding, said Chi Van Dan a cancer biologist at the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research in New York City. Doctors measure the level of CTC in the blood. This is a type of liquid biopsy. In this way, they check how the disease progresses in cancer patients. The first lesson of the new research is that the time of day the blood sample is taken can give misleading information, says Dan. This means that doctors should check the timing of tests, he adds. Aceto believes that the differences in the behavior of human breast cancer cells depend on many factors that still need to be explored. Hormones, which are one of the tools your body uses to signal it's time to wake up or go to bed, may play a role. The team found that giving mice hormones such as testosterone or insulin had an effect on CTC levels, either lowering or increasing it, depending on when the hormones were given. Dang says understanding how this process works could one day lead to better cancer treatments. He adds that more research needs to be done first to understand the intricate network linking the circadian rhythm and cancer. Meanwhile, Meng cautions against viewing sleep as an enemy for people with breast cancer. Some studies have shown that people with cancer who typically sleep less than seven hours a night are at a higher risk of dying. And that disrupting the circadian rhythm in mice can accelerate the development of cancer. Studies don't show that we don't need sleep, he says.
The research indicates that CTC cells prefer a certain phase of the 24-hour cycle to enter the bloodstream, he explains.